Ren is a nine-year-old whose world revolved around his mom, but then, his mom fell terribly sick. She didn't recover. Ren was devastated. His world came crashing down. It was too much for a young boy to handle. Ren was assigned to live with his uncles, but the memories of his absent father overwhelmed him. The pain, it was just too much. Ren decided he couldn't stay with his uncles and ran away. He found himself on the streets, with no money and no home, surviving by stealing food and money. The sight of other kids with their parents was a stab in the heart every time. He missed his mom so much. Amidst all the hardship, Ren found a friend, a little white creature named Chico. They stuck together, their shelter a bridge that kept them dry when it rained. One night, two strangers in cloaks approached Ren. One of them began prying into his past, asking about his mom and dad. Ren snapped, telling him to back off. That's when he realized this stranger was no ordinary man. He was a talking bear. Fear coursed through Ren's veins. The bear's companion persuaded him to leave Ren alone. As they were leaving, the bear offered Ren an opportunity to join them. Initially frozen in shock, Ren eventually decided to follow them, and found himself in a strange world filled with all kinds of creatures. Ren, overwhelmed, tried to hide. But three wolf-like beasts found him. They tormented him, promising to skin him and sell him. Yet their fun was stopped by a kind monk named Hayakushubo. Hayakushubo comforted Ren, assuring him there was no need to fear. Soon after, the bear, who went by the name Kumatetsu, and his friend Tatara, appeared. Kumatetsu announced that Ren was his new pupil. They were in a place called Jutengai, a world separate from the human realm, where beasts resided. Kumatetsu was trained by the ruler of Jutengai. The ruler was soon to ascend to godhood and had to choose a successor. It was either going to be Kumatetsu or another pupil named Ayozen. While Ayozen was revered for his bravery and had many students of his own, Kumatetsu was a bit coarse and unwelcoming. His teacher had advised him to find a student, and thus he had found Ren. The thought of being Kumatetsu's pupil left Ren reeling. He trailed behind Kumatetsu to his new home, processing his new reality. There they quarreled over having raw eggs for breakfast. Ren, who already had reservations about being Kumatetsu's student, decided he'd had enough, and once again, he chose to run away. Ren hides again from the beasts and observes two kids at an ice cream stand. Their names are Ichirohiko and Jiromaru, sons of Iozen. When Iozen discovers that Ren, a human, is Kumatetsu's student, he becomes anxious. He's worried that the inherent darkness within humans might turn Ren into a terrifying monster. But Kumatetsu, in his typical stubborn manner, strongly disagrees with Iozen. This difference of opinion sparks a fierce confrontation between them. As the fight ensues, most spectators cheer for Yozen, not very fond of Kumatetsu's brawling style. Kumatetsu is initially at a disadvantage, but he eventually gains strength, matching Iozen. Just as it appears he has the upper hand, the crowd's cheers for Iozen provide a resurgence of strength. Ren watches as Kumatetsu falls to the ground, noting how everyone in the crowd only shouts for Iozen's name. Seeing Kumatetsu's isolation stirs empathy within Ren. They are both alone. He starts cheering for Kumatetsu, encouraging him to continue the fight. However, Iozen strikes a powerful blow, sending Kumatetsu hurtling through the air just as the Lord of Jutengai arrives and stops the brawl. Defeated but defiant, Kumatetsu insists that Ren will remain his student. The Lord allows this, assuring that he will monitor the situation. He reminds Iozen that not all humans harbor darkness in their hearts before dismissing everyone. Ren decides to stay Kumatetsu's student. He aspires to be as strong as Kumatetsu someday. Their initial training, however, does not go smoothly. Ren struggles to mimic Kumatetsu's moves, and Kumatetsu, it turns out, is not a particularly effective teacher as he explains it as if he was a five-year-old. He cryptically tells Ren to grasp the sword in his heart, leaving Ren more confused than ever. Frustrated, Kumatetsu departs. Shortly after, Jiromaru and his friends corner Ren. They start bullying him and call him a monster. Yet, Ichirohiko intervenes, dismissing the notion by saying Ren is too weak to be a monster. And when he returns home, Kumatetsu also calls him weak. Ren agrees but adds that Kumatetsu, in comparison to Aiozen, is also weak. Hayakushubo steps in, explaining to Ren that Kumatetsu's harsh demeanor is a product of his solitary upbringing. He had to survive without parents or a mentor, learning everything on his own. Kumatetsu feels guilty for being a bad teacher, but he simply doesn't know how to improve. Tatara offers Kumatetsu advice, suggesting he recall his own childhood to better empathize with Ren, who is playing with Chiko. Suddenly, Ren hears his mother's voice in his mind, encouraging him to learn from his master. Motivated by this, Ren begins to imitate Kumatetsu in everything he does. Kumatetsu is bothered by this, but he realizes that Ren is simply trying to learn, much like a child imitating a parent. This warms Kumatetsu's heart, 
and he even starts demonstrating more for Ren to mimic. From that point, they train in unison. Ren becomes a master at fighting with a sword and his bare hands, while Kumatetsu improves his ability to anticipate his opponent's next move. Ren's skills earn him respect from Jiromaru, who once bullied him, and they form a friendship. By the time Ren turns 17, he's an impressive fighter. Kumatetsu, too, has significantly improved, displaying better technique in his battles. Seeing Ren's progression, many creatures aspire to become Kumatetsu's pupils. Despite their progress, Ren and Kumatetsu's arguments persist, leading to more merry chases. During one such chase, Ren stumbles upon a portal back to the human world. The sudden shift is somewhat overwhelming, yet not unwelcome. He finds himself in a library where he meets a girl named Cade, who helps him read a book. He stands up to some bullies on her behalf. They become fast friends. Keita helps Ren read several books and suggests that he consider applying to college. Ren is a bit anxious, but he's open to the idea. In the process of navigating college applications, Ren learns about his father's whereabouts. They run into each other by chance in a store. His father reveals he wasn't aware of Ren's mother's passing until much later because of their divorce. He had tried to locate Ren, even when the police had given up their search. This revelation makes Ren consider if he should pursue a conventional life. He returns to Jutengai to discuss this with Kumatetsu, just to get beaten up. Kumatetsu found one of Ren's books, leading to Ren sharing some major news. He wants to attend a human school. This revelation upsets Kumatetsu. Before leaving, Ren discloses that he met his human father and intends to live with him. Kumatetsu tries to persuade him to stay, running after him, but Ren doesn't stop. After Ren's departure, Kumatetsu reverts back to his old self, consumed by sadness. He feels as if he has lost a son, as he had always considered himself to be Ren's father figure. In the human world, Ren's father promises to let Ren make decisions about their relationship. But Ren, still grappling with his emotions, reacts harshly and walks out on his dad. Mirroring his earlier departure from Kumatetsu, lost in thoughts about his two father figures, one in the human world and one in the beast world, Ren finds himself in the bustling streets. Here, he's confronted with a dark, enraged version of himself with a dark hole in his chest that vanishes shortly after. Spotting the same hole in his own reflection, Ren is overcome with fear. In his bid to escape, he stumbles upon Kaidi outside the library. He asks her what he truly is, a human, a beast, or a monster. Kaidi reassures him. It's natural to feel confused and that she herself experiences anger at times. She gives Ren her red bookmark, hoping it might help him somehow. He returns to the Beast World and learns about the duel between Iyozen and Kumatetsu, scheduled for the next day. Out of the blue, Ikirohiko starts beating him, hurling insults at him and Kumatetsu. He's consumed by jealousy. He cannot stand people looking up to Ren's improvement. Ren notices the same hollow spot in Ichirohiko's chest before he storms off. The anticipated fight takes place in the Colosseum. The Grandmaster proclaims that he will ascend to become the God of Decisiveness. As the battle commences, Kumatetsu lunges at Iozen, who effortlessly sends him sprawling. The rule is simple. If you remain down for 10 seconds, you lose. As the count reaches its final moment, Ren yells out at Kumatetsu, calling him a fool and urging him to stand. Kumatetsu, sparked by Ren's words, regains his fire, rising to his feet, ready to continue the fight. Kumatetsu retrieves his fallen sword, and with Ren rooting for him, fights both vigorously and intelligently against Iozen. In fact, he manages to knock Yozen's own sword out of his hands. One more punch, Ren encourages, and Kumatetsu delivers. Iozen collapses, failing to rise after 10 seconds, leading to Kumatetsu being declared the victor. The crowd erupts in cheers, but Kumatetsu simply exchanges a knowing look with Ren. They share a high five, and for a moment all seems perfect. But then, Ichirohiko suddenly unveils a hidden power, guiding Iozen's sword into Kumatetsu's back. He proclaims himself the true winner, drawing strength from his power and his father's weapon. Ren spots that terrifyingly dark void in Ichirohiko's chest. With the control of a shadowy hand, Ichirohiko drives the sword deeper into Kumatetsu, causing him to fall. Ren's anger makes him lose control of himself, and he uses a similar power to make his sword fly at Ichirohiko. However, Cade's red string cools his fury, and his sword drops before it can reach its target. Enveloped in shadows, Ichirohiko vanishes, leaving Ren to pass out from the strain. Upon regaining consciousness, Ren finds Kumatetsu still unconscious. That's when Yozen reveals Ichirohiko is, in fact, a human. Iozen found him as a baby in a human city and raised him, but this made Ichirohiko feel desolate and lost. Despite being considered one of them, he couldn't hide the shame that he was different, a human. Upon hearing this, Ren resolves to find Ichirohiko. Hyakushubo and Tatara object. Yet, Ren insists he's not seeking revenge. 
Rather, he wants to help Ichirohiko, as he can empathize with his pain and confusion. He thanks them for their care, and entrusts Kumatetsu to them while he returns to the human world. There, he encounters Keita and gives her his copy of Moby Dick, just in case something happens to him. Unexpectedly, Ikirohiko appears, still with that haunting, dark emptiness in his chest. A quick sword fight ensues as he chases after Ren and Keide, but Ikirohiko summons massive shadowy arms and knocks Ren aside. Keide helps Ren back to his feet, and they flee. Ichirohiko picks up the discarded book, reads the word whale, and departs. Suddenly, people see a massive whale-like shadow engulfs the ground, triggering a wave of vehicle collisions. Sensing the danger, Keide takes hold of Ren's hand, and they retreat to the safety of a subway station. Ren realizes that he must confront Ichirohiko and his dark energy. His strategy involves using the emptiness in his own heart to absorb Ichirohiko's dark force. But there's a risk. It could cost him his life. In the realm of the beasts, Kumatetsu, though injured, is resolute about helping Ren. He declares his intention to ascend to godhood to assist Ren. His determination is fueled by his profound affection for Ren. Trapped in a corner, Ren and Kaede find Ichirohiko closing in on them. Despite their attempts to escape, the gigantic shadow of the whale consistently blocks their path. Prioritizing Kaede's safety, Ren boldly faces the intimidating shadow, bracing himself to absorb Ichirohiko's dark energy. Just as Ren is poised to take in the dark force, a flaming sword materializes between him and the shadow. The beasts have come to help. Hayakushubo reveals that the blazing sword is Kumatetsu. He has chosen to reincarnate as the sword spirit residing in Ren's heart. This revelation stirs memories of Kumatetsu's first teaching about discovering the sword within his heart. Overcome by memories of his master Kumatetsu, Ren breaks down in tears. Despite his emotional state, he can hear Kumatetsu's voice within him, nudging him to stop crying. Gathering all his bravery, Ren gears up to conclude the fight once and for all. He lunges at Ichirohiko, and while aided by Kumatetsu's strength, he succeeds in defeating Ichirohiko. The menacing whale shadow fades away, leaving a defeated Ichirohiko, who then collapses. Ren removes his own bracelet and gently places it around Ichirohiko's wrist. He assures the unconscious Ichirohiko that they share a common bond. They were both raised by beasts, making them children of beasts in their own right. Ren returns to the beast realm, where a grand celebration is underway to commemorate his victory. During the festivities, Keida hands Ren his book, along with a college application form. Ren resolves to attend college and live with his father in the human world. He pledges to never wield a sword again after leaving the beast world. Despite this, he remains the most formidable swordsman, as he bears the spiritual sword of Kumatetsu within his heart. Comment your favorite part of the video. See you at the next one. Please.